The following FizzCast deals with the situation involving this unusual looking wheel. Please pause the video and read through the question. The question wants us to find two things. Firstly, what is the frictional force which acts on the wheel? That's part A. And secondly, what's the rotational inertia of this unusual looking wheel about the rotation axis? That's part B. We're told some important information here. First of all, there's a force which is being applied to the wheel of 10 newtons. The mass of the wheel is 10 kilograms. It has a radius of 0.3 meters. Importantly, the wheel is rolling smoothly. So that means that the only frictional force is due to static friction, no sliding motion. We're told the surface is horizontal, and we're given a numerical value for the acceleration of the center of mass, which is 0.6 meters per second squared. So an interpretation of this problem would be that it's rolling motion, and that tells us that the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the angular velocity omega times the radius of the wheel. Also, it's an unusual looking wheel, so we can't really say that the rotational inertia is equal to just the mass times the radius squared. That would be the case of if all the mass was located on the um, outer uh, radius or the rim of the wheel. But this has some mass distribution, so we, we can't make that assumption. We'll actually find out a numerical value for that in part B. So let's think about part A. We're asked to find the frictional force of the wheel. And so I think what we should do is have a look at using Newton's laws. The net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. In this case, we're going to think about the acceleration of the center of mass of the wheel. And also, because it's rolling motion, there's some rotation which is going on. So we also have the rotational analog of Newton's second law, that the torque is going to be equal to the rotational inertia times the angular acceleration. Because I'm given the mass and I'm given the acceleration as a numerical value, I think I can use these two quantities to find the net force which is acting on the object. And since I'm given one of those forces, then all I need to do is find out the other force, and I think that's the frictional force. Let's quantify that first of all by putting on some forces on this diagram. So we've got the applied force, which is 10 newtons, acting to the right. A couple of other forces, we know that there's going to be a weight force, mg, acting down through the center of mass, which is also the center of gravity. We have a normal force, which we can say is going to be exerted um, also through the center of mass, because that's directly above the, um, the point where it uh, contacts the ground. That's that normal force. If these were the only three forces which are acting on my wheel, then it wouldn't rotate. It would only have linear motion, because there's no torques. These three forces cannot provide a torque about the center of mass, because if I choose that as my pivot point, well, the perpendicular distance is zero. So there must be another force which is acting and that's causing the wheel to rotate in a clockwise fashion. That force is the force of friction, so I can now add that in. That must point to the left, the force of friction. I don't know the magnitude of that force. That's what I want to find out. If I have a look at uh, my uh, forces in the y direction, so let's choose some coordinate systems on here. So x I'll take to the right, we've given that, so we'll choose y as being up. The sum of the forces in the y direction, well that's going to be my normal force n minus my weight force mg, and that's going to equal zero, because the acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero. That's pretty straightforward. The sum of the forces in my x direction, well, I've got my applied force minus my friction force. They're the only two forces acting in the horizontal direction, in the x direction. And that must result in my mass being accelerated, uh, an acceleration of the center of mass. So I've got a numerical value for that. So I can rearrange this equation to find the, for my frictional force. The force of friction equal to the applied force minus mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. So I have some numerical values here, so the applied force is 10 newtons, my mass is 10 kilograms, and my acceleration is 0 0.6 meters per second squared. My mass times acceleration is going to be a force, that'll be 6 newtons, so 10 newtons minus uh, 6 newtons is equal to 4 newtons. So 4 newtons is the answer for part A, it's the magnitude of my force of friction. The direction is to the left.
Next up, let's look at part B, is to find the rotational inertia of the wheel. So I can use the torque equation for this. So remembering that my torque vector is going to be equal to R cross with F. So importantly, in this case, the radial vector goes from the axis of rotation out to the point where my force is acting. So this is like my vector R, and my vector F is my frictional force vector. This is what causes the torque. It's my turning force. And if we do R cross F, then that actually points into page. I might call into the page the positive direction. Just like choosing this coordinate system up here. You can choose whether you want clockwise to be positive or counterclockwise to be positive. It's an arbitrary choice. So the net torque here is going to be equal to the magnitude of R, which is the radius of the wheel, times the force of friction, times the sine of the angle between them. Well, the frictional force acts tangentially, so it's 90 degrees. The sine of 90 is 1, so it's just R times F. That's the only force which provides a torque. And that must be equal to I times alpha. We want to find the rotational inertia, so we rearrange that equation to say that I is equal to R times the force of friction divided by alpha. Now we know what the radius is, it's 0.3 meters. We've just found out what the frictional force is, it's 4 newtons. What about this angular acceleration alpha? How do we know that? And the way that we can get this is, because this is rolling motion, if we take the time derivative of the velocity of the center of mass, we'll get the acceleration of the center of mass, and that's going to be equal to the time derivative of omega, which is alpha, times r. So we can substitute for the angular acceleration alpha as being equal to the acceleration of the center of mass divided by the radius. And hopefully you can see that if I've got this denominator here, I can move the radius from that part of the fraction up to here, so I get an r squared. To remind you how that's done, if I have 1 over 1 over x, that's the same as taking my numerator and multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator, so 1 over x to the power minus 1, that's like 1 times the reciprocal of 1 over x is x. Okay, so we can put in some numbers now for i r squared, so 0 0.3 is the radius in meters squared, the frictional force was 4 newtons, and the acceleration of the center of mass was 0 0.6, which is 0 0.6, and that should have the units of kilograms meters squared. It should have the same units of all rotational inertias, and that's a mass times a distance squared. That's actually something that we can check, so maybe we should do a little bit of assessment here ask ourselves, are the units really consistent? That might not be so straightforward. What have I got here um, as my uh, ratio? So my r is in meters, so that's meters squared. I've got a force now, this 4 is actually newtons, and I'm dividing by an acceleration, which is meters per second squared. Now is, does this have the same units? Let's recall that 1 newton is the force required to accelerate 1 kilogram by 1 meter per second squared. If I divide by meters per second squared here, we can see the per second squared cancels with the per second squared on the bottom. A meter cancels with a meter on the bottom, and we have meters squared times kilograms, which is the correct units. So we can assess the units. What about assessing whether this is a reasonable number? Is 0.6 reasonable? What if I had that i was equal to mr squared as a numerical value for my unusual wheel? So we can take the mass of 10 kilograms, multiply that by 0.3 squared as my radius, and that gives me 0 0.9 kilograms meters squared. This numerical value of my rotational inertia would be if all of my mass was located on the rim of the wheel. That would be the largest value I could have for i, if all the mass is as far away from the center of mass as possible. That's like a hoop. So it's not surprising that my numerical value for, 
for I, for rotational inertia, is less than that because some of the mass is distributed closer to the axis of rotation. And so they'll move mass closer to the axis of rotation, then that rotational inertia decreases. So that seems reasonable as an order of magnitude number as well, and units-wise it seems reasonable too.